Hi, my name is Ellen Sue Stern and I am talking to you from Tales from Under the Cover, my video blog. I always wanted to do stand-up comedy. For a while I thought, well, maybe I'll do sit-down comedy. But then unfortunately I became ill and a friend of mine suggested, why don't you do a video blog and call it Tales from Under the Cover. So here is my first try at that. Um, I'm the author of 20 books in 14 languages. I have made a career out of taking what's happened in my life and writing books about it, speaking about it. I've had a very exciting, interesting life. I've been very fortunate and I'm very grateful for that. However, what I'm not very grateful for is the fact that unfortunately I was misdiagnosed with MS um, some 12 years ago and put on steroids for 10 years which destroyed all of the bone in my body, including needing to have all of my teeth pulled and implants and dentures. I know they're beautiful. See how beautiful they are? And expensive. Um, and three years ago, I discovered that I had developed spinal stenosis and very severe irreversible disc degeneration. And so for three years, I have spent in horrific pain um, living on opiates dealing with doctors who treated me as if I was a drug addict, which I'm not and never have been, and just trying to push through. Um, when I discovered that I had this, I saw four neurosurgeons, all of whom said I needed a full spinal fusion, six months in a body cast, uh, with a 20% chance of success. And of course I said, you know, would you do that? And their answer was no. And I said, well, what's the alternative? Because that's of course the question that we would ask. And their answer was, well, there isn't an alternative. So what you do is you push through. You push through with lumbar traction machines and rehab and hot baths and sheer mental resolve. And that is what I've been doing for the last three years until I finally could not stand another pinched nerve and had surgery in February. And so I am in the process of recovering. And part of that is finishing up this brand new website for my books and going on so that I can begin to do my next project, as I said, which is called On a Scale of 1 to 10, um, What's It Really Like to Live with Chronic Pain? Because that's something that I deal with. And I have to tell you, I've learned a lot about that. And it hasn't all been easy. A lot of it has been very painful over the past three years. Um, I became very isolated. I lost most of my friends. I wasn't fun. I mean, you know, my friends were going to Belize scuba diving and hiking the Appalachian Trail, and what could I do? I could, you know, I couldn't even do the things I can do, like write or play the piano. Um, I wasn't a lot of fun, I can tell you that much. And, you know, people really become disenfranchised when they're chronically ill, which is why this is something that's important to me and something that I want to do. So what I'm hoping to do is as soon as this website is finished, and there will be lots of video blogs. The video blogs will not just be about chronic illness, but this is something that I'm doing in the hopes that I will get some support to do the book and a website and a monthly video cast. Um, but I also have, you know, a lot of other things that I want to talk about. Um, I have used my life in such a way that when something difficult has happened, I have taken it and created something out of it. For example, my first pregnancy was very difficult and so I wrote Expecting Change, The Emotional Journey Through Pregnancy. I became overwhelmed and wrote The Indispensable Woman. I went through a very painful and difficult divorce and wrote Loving an Imperfect Man and a book with my children called Divorce is Not the End of the World. Couldn't sleep one night so I wrote Yawn, Bedtime Reading for Insomniacs, so you get the idea. And now this is something that I would like to pursue because people in chronic pain are treated very badly. And I realized something. I realized that now that I am in the process of recovery, and I am, I'm doing just great. I just had my last post-op. Um, I guess it's been about three and a half months and I got an A++ and I'm getting out there and I'm able to walk and go places and do things and I'm trying to put on a little weight. So hopefully you will watch me get a little fatter here. Um, and, you know, I really am ready to go on to my next project. And so I am taking the products that I do have and getting them out there so that they can continue because I have all of these products which are now on this website. And I will, as part of that, have a blog called Tales from Under the Covers. And we'll be talking about lots and lots of things. We'll be talking about politics and love and life and 
what it's like to be at this stage of life. We'll talk about parenting. Um, you know, I always figured that my last book, if I ever wrote another book, would be my memoir. Um, but I figured I'd have to wait until my parents were gone. But I forgot that I have children, and I have two pretty rock star children. And though there's a lot of interesting things that have happened in my life that would fit into a memoir, from the backstory of the books that I've written to the celebrities that I've encountered to um, relationships to uh, my mother ending up with infarct dementia in a nursing home for many years to um, an ex-boyfriend killing himself. Um, you know, a lot of things, a lot of difficult things and the difficult things that happen when you have children sometimes. And you know, that's hard. That's one of the things that's difficult about being a writer is that our children's stories are also our stories. And so even though I think I have a lot to say in a memoir, there's, I wouldn't say it would be X-rated, but there's enough that's steamy in there that I think I wouldn't put my kids in that position to potentially undermine their efforts to create their lives and do their careers because it's their turn, it's their time. But it's also my time. And so I am going forward with this and I hope you will join me in it. Um, I'm going to be getting out of bed. I'm going to be walking. I'm going to be going places and doing things. And, you know, I learned something from my dad. I learned that our lives are our own and we need to choose them. Um, one of the things I realized about living in chronic pain was that I had begun to feel badly and I'm not going to do that anymore. I'm going to start doing things that make me happy. And I also learned that it's very important to choose how we want to live our lives and how we want to end our lives. Um, my dad was an amazing guy and after breathing very hard after my mom passed away, he met a woman and he ended up dying in the middle of the night on a cruise ship in bed with her. So he wrote the end of his story and that is exactly how he wanted it to end. So that's another thing I'd like to talk about is death with dignity. Um, I would, I think that's a very important topic for us to talk about, like talk about the internet, whether it's a good thing, a bad thing. Uh, there are just so many things to talk about, and I hope that you will join me on this. I'm going to be getting out of bed. I'm going to be walking. I'm going to be doing fun things. I hope you'll tell me if you have things that you'd like to talk about, um, and that what we talk about will be provocative and interesting and informative and hopefully entertaining, because who doesn't want to be entertained? So whether you are about ready to go to sleep, good night. If you are getting up in the morning, good morning. And from Tales Under the Cover, this is Ellen Sue Stern. Thank you for joining me, and I'm looking forward to seeing you again.